Um, I think the debate very clearly showed me the lack of coherent data that we can draw on to assess the impact of zero hours of contract. All the panellists did agree with that, that there needs to be some form of um, investigation, the review that's being carried out by BIS. There was a hope that that review would be more than a box ticking exercise, more than a consultation, that we actually would get a firm code of practice. It wasn't clear what panellists wanted, but everybody did seem to agree that a code of practice was the way to go. Um, there was obviously uh, some disagreement as to the effectiveness of these types of contracts. Um, there were those MPs who believed that they were potentially exploitative. But then we heard from the Employees and Recruitment Federation who flipped that round really and said that um, you know even though that was the case it was better that these people had some hours of work than none at all. Uh, I think the truth probably is somewhere in the middle. It is good that 200,000 or more, we don't know the numbers, people do have jobs now. But there doesn't seem to be any evidence, as um, one of the MPs was suggesting, that just because you get these zero hours contracts they then lead to longer term jobs full time or part time. There is no evidence to suggest that. So the worry really is that somehow people get stuck in a rut. I think that's something that government needs to really get under the skin of and understand. Are these a temporary phenomenon? In which case let's look at them, let's get the numbers correct and let's put in a code of practice to try and regulate them with a small r. Or are they something that's here to stay? Um, we don't know the answer to that, but I think certainly today there was a sense from some that they might be. I thought it was a, an excellent debate on a subject. The more we know about it, the less certain we get of we're actually tackling the right sort of problems. I think the two things I'd take about it. First of all, the problem's going to be very different in different parts of the economy. So what's going on in the care sector is going to be very different to what's going on in retailing and hospitality. And lastly, we really need to pull the evidence we have got, the information that sits in various organisations but isn't widely available, and the Work Foundation would be very pleased to try and coordinate that. I think what was fantastic was actually there was broad agreement that we need some empirical data, um, you know, from the two UC to, to us and the two extremes, which would enable government to seriously look at this issue and decide what's the best way of responding. We're absolutely clear that regulation isn't the way to go, and the best way of dealing with this issue would be to create some kind of code of conduct and hold the mirror up to employers in terms of how they use zero hours. Because we think it's much more about a managerial issue than the contractual relationship themselves. It's actually about how you, the expectations on recruitment, it's about good communication through the, the journey of employment rather than saying zero hours are a bad thing. Um, certainly in the higher education sector, um, zero hour contracts are used. Um, often for a wide variety of roles and occupations and uses, including guest lecturers who may be a barrister um, coming into a specialist lecturer, or maybe a mentor who um, has zero hour contracts with several universities. The debate today covered a lot about um, fairness in these arrangements, whether or not there should be a code of practice. Um, certainly in higher education, um, employers definitely are. Uh, looking to be fair employers and um, looking to be employers of choice within their region. And so we would certainly be interested in where that work goes and uh, where, it, where it takes the conversation and, and debate in this area. Um, so I think the debate brought up quite a lot of interesting questions and I think the two main topic, two main concepts I've come up with around zero contracts is flexibility and this focus of exploitation. But I think the consistent theme through the discussion was there is no real research into the area and so it means that there's lots of assumptions about how people might feel within these forms of contracts. So what needs to happen more is the research um, in an academic environment. But also the challenge you have is trying to get access to these individuals because they're on these loose forms of, sort of um, employment contracts, trying to actually get access into them to survey them or to speak to them is really difficult and that's what I'm finding myself at the moment and that's I think on a larger scale will be one of the challenges around this quite topical debate. <laughs>